sponsor today again? Today's sponsor is Hinman, Howard, and Cattell. All right. And are they providing the snacks? They are providing the imaginary snacks today. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Very good. Well, all right. So what I want to start off with is um, I am going to go through showing time, as I indicated already, and go through the step. So to be able to use showing time, it has to be a live account. I will be using my account. So please don't be offended if you're gonna see my name. Um, if you're gonna see a company name, that is not the intent of the presentation. It is meant to only to be able to use live information as we go through. Um, with that, don't steal my um, client's name and phone numbers uh, as also as you go through and look at them. So um, let's start off with, I'm gonna do a screen share and I am going to start Once I get the screen share going, I'm going to hopefully get to the spot that I want to go. And bear with me for a second while I have to move things around here just a little bit. So to start off with for today, I did go into um, a listing and I added a listing for my own personal property. No, I'm not selling, um, but if somebody wants to make an offer, you know, I guess there's always a price for everything. So when I go into Matrix, you're gonna see that I've uh, created a incomplete listing on my property to be able to see that. We'll be using that as an example as I go through. So yes, we have showing time um, on, on the dashboard, which we're gonna go over in details I've indicated, and we have market stats. So those are the two buttons we're gonna be paying attention to today. So clicking on showing time, and obviously because I'm a broker, you will also see there are some tabs in here for myself as an agent and myself as an office. So there will be a couple of different tabs that will be out there. I'm just gonna briefly click through some of these tabs just to make sure everyone is familiar with what's under each tab. Yes, the homepage does have the number of listings as far as not yet confirmed or confirmed for my listings from that standpoint. Um, next is messages. And let's see here what's gonna pop up for messages. So for example, I have these series of Longdale messages. Did you know that you can communicate with, with your fellow agents specifically about that property within the app? And I'm going to try to go in and show that as a demonstration on the app a little bit later on. But for example, Longdale had a offer that was accepted on Friday at noontime. And agents that had things previously scheduled when I offer was accepted, I changed the status in the MLS. Using showing time, showing time notified every single agent that there was a status change. So they knew that something had happened in the MLS and had gone from an active to a C. Showing time automatically says basically you still want to show the property because there was a status change. I in turn though sent out to everybody and said, um, I'm gonna click on this one and see what it says. Oh, okay. Um, so this was within showing time. So showing is confirmed. So that's where Patrick was seeing that. So this happened to be Patrick or Jerry, which was showing my listing. And even, I knew that the agent had received a status update. So I put in there, yes, the seller accepted an offer this afternoon. It, it is subject to a home inspection. You are still welcome. And I got to move my screen off here um, because it's blocking my view. You're still welcome to show the property questions. Please let me know. And I wrote, started to write thank you, but I reached my character limit. I was too wordy from that standpoint. And, and then Patrick canceled the showing and the reason he selected was properties under contract. So I notified, even though this system notified everybody, 
I, in turn, sent that message out through showing time to let everybody know, to give them that extra courtesy to know that what was going on and let them know they were subject to the home inspection. So that's why you're gonna see all those messages there specifically for 146 Longdale. So this again is on the desktop. So now under showing, because as, as I said before, because you're seeing some additional things between um, our listings would be the firm, my listings, I'm making a request and I've requested and showing cart. When we get into showing cart, Mary Ray, that's where I'm gonna show as far as some additional features that will make it easy. So again, then it is color coded here showing how many listings were waiting, how many were canceled, how many are taking place. And this is going through the month of August and that is how it's showing. Down here below, there's other filter options to be able to see what this might be. This is for the month. I'm, you know, if there's anything else for the day, for the week, um, might be going on as far as activity. So that's under the showing tab. Under the listing setup, this is how, um, let me go here, I don't, you don't need to see the office. This is my listings and how they're being set up as far as activity. That is where I have the demo in the MLS. I'll come back and I'll show you a little bit more detail listing setup. Agent setup is again, um, how it's going to be for things that I want to be. So yes, I uploaded a picture of myself. Yes, I have my contact information that I'm allowed to update within here. This is pre-populated by the MLS. I cannot change that user login, add a profile. My defaults are, as a listing agent, I allow agents to request appointments online. That's another feature that we're not gonna get into that is for a upgraded service within showing time. Allow agents to request virtual appointments. Options are in-person or virtual appointments, virtual only, in-person only. Um, virtual appointments were created during the height of COVID and obviously it's still possible. I, in the last two weeks, I had somebody that was quarantined. They came from out of state in one of the states that are not allowed to have to quarantine for 14 days. I specifically requested virtual appointments so I could go in and showcase them. And they bought a house and they actually bought it when they came out of quarantine. Allow buyers to request appointments online, same scenario, that is by default, I chose that. My default setting for all new listings are, until I make otherwise changes, is appointment required. I could do a go and show, I could also do view instructions. My default is appointment required because even if it's vacant, I wanna make sure when it first goes live, in case I didn't get to make a change, that appointment's required that I'm being able to make those adjustments. Allow scheduling overlaps right now, I have no, prior to COVID, I had no problem if an agent was there ahead of time and they were, one was in the backyard, one's the front, one was inside the basement, they could work that out. But in COVID environment, um, I allowed the MLS to make a change and it was no exclusive, no exclusive appointments requested only. So no one can schedule at the same time. Share showing details with your clients. Default, I do not share that, I could. And those are the information I could do not share. Um, just share agent's company um, only. Um, share agent's name and company. Share all agent contact details. Now, my defaults are showing voice is that annoying phone system that calls you in an automated. Mine is turned off. Push is the app, and that's why you see a picture of the phone text message. I don't really operate under text, but I'm getting it by push and by email, which allows me an easy recording from that standpoint. So when appointments are requested and when appointments are confirmed or canceled, those are the choices that I have. Obviously, you can have any of those choices. Push will only show up if you have installed the app, which will go down a little bit further. Um, feedback. Request feedback from showing agents. Yes. I have it as a default. I could always change it on a specific listing to a no if, there were, if that was what I was looking for. The number of times to resend 
a request for feedback, I have it after three. If I'm not gonna hear after three, that's my choice that I'm not gonna hear, but I can do it up to nine. Number of days between resends, I have it too. Maybe the agent doesn't know right away, but maybe they've shown some more properties. Hopefully they will let me know, hey, we moved on, we made another offer. They didn't like this after they looked at other properties, whatever the case may be, to be able to get the feedback in a simple way through, um, through the system is great. I think it's a great system. Everyone can choose their own way to get feedback as they so choose. So that's under listing agent. Under buyer agent, if I'm showing a property, same scenarios. The showing voice, I'm not looking for the phone call, I'm not looking for a text, I want to push and I want an email. So when appointments are received, I get an email. When appointments are viewed, I get an email. When appointments are confirmed or canceled, I get an email. So now these first two, when appointments are received. So if I send a request to show Terry's listing, um, I know that Terry received the email, so I know that he's gonna take action. I know when he viewed it, that I'm gonna see that he did that. So I will get an automatic notification from, from the system that Terry looked at it or viewed it. That helps me understand that, hey, I never saw that Terry looked at it. Did he miss that? Maybe I need to give him a call. So those two things are helpful um, from that standpoint. They only show up if the homeowner is not part of the process. So if only Terry was confirming appointments, that's when I'll see that information. I'm not gonna see when the homeowner does, but only when the listing agent is. When there's a price change notification on a property that I've shown, I could select that. So I showed 123 Main Street at 99.9, it changed to 94 today, um, and I would get a notification via showing time. I'm choosing not to have that turned on. Offer registration notification. When an offer registration notification is sent, um, I've got that turned on. I don't think I've ever received anything. Showing cart, showing cart. When a showing carts are assigned to me, maybe I work as a team or a partnership, I might be getting a updated cart. Or as the broker, I might be assigning, a. I set up an appointment and I'm turning it over to Terry and he's going to show the property. And that's when the showing cart would be transferred over to me. Feedback request. Again, as a buyer's agent, but receive feedback requests from other agents. Yes, that's a courtesy. Of course, I want to know if an agent is asking me for something. I'm gonna get it via email, and I'm also gonna get it as push on my app, so I can respond via email or on the app. Um, if the property is a multifamily and there's multiple steps from that standpoint, that would be that option for there. Again, as a buyer's agent, default appointment type for new appointments, anything that I schedule is a showing. If I was um, somebody else, I could have all those other appointments that could be in there. My default is showing. And um, default appointment length, I never want to schedule anything more than an hour by default. Now, maybe the listing agent is only allowing 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes. My default when I'm scheduling something is an hour as much as I can. Um, now, no, I don't have access to Century Lock. I do have Supra, and yes, I have a HUD key for whatever that means by today's standards. Additional preferences, messages by email or push, MLS office broadcast, and agent communications. Um, I only want communications 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So um, I'm in bed by 10, so I don't want anything after 10 o'clock. Now, I have a iPhone and an iPad. I have an old iPhone that I never removed. I have not disconnected one of those iPhones. It's in a warehouse somewhere, probably in Taiwan. I'm waiting to be disassembled or resold. But um, I'm not going to, I have not deactivated one of those iPhones, but those are the devices that I have, and that would be the push and download serial key and system information. So I made one change there, I'm saving my changes. Over here, before I go to the next thing, 
is resend login, add a missing listing note, um, a mass, ma mass add listing note, and calendar sync. I am going to get into the calendar sync a little bit more, but did you know that calendar sync, um, you can, anything in showing time, because it does have its own calendar, as we already talked about over here, it can be um, an overlay into your calendar on your phone or your desktop. And that's why I'm hoping that I will go on to my iPad and show you what that looks like. Any questions on this before we move on? You're welcome to unmute yourself to ask a question or put something in the chat. Martin? Yes. It's Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Hi. When you do a listing setup, Mm -hmm. and you have three listings, is it for all of the listings or can you specify, and where do you specify which one you're talking about? Okay, so this is my default, my system default. So this is what it's always gonna be whenever I add a listing to showing time. Then specifically, I can change that listing and that is one of the things I'm gonna show you. So great question and it will be going into that detail. Anybody else have any other questions at this time of what I've gone over or specifically to this area? All right, so I was on agent setup. For any brokers that are on, there is an office setup and you can certainly do some things with an office setup. Um, I'm happy to do that one-on-one um, -on -one with a broker specifically, but um, for the most part, I think everyone is an agent um, it just so happens if as a broker you're going on, you get to see the different offices. So each office could have its own office setup. And you can have branding. As an office, I can choose to have my logo or colors or um, everything else. So I choose to do that. Um, I could have um, contacts, contacts in here, um, select by agent um, for sellers and buyers. I could upload things at that point. I'll get into a little bit more details on contacts when we're scheduling a showing. Feedback, this is probably one of those things that gets overlooked. So um, was there a question? I wasn't sure if somebody was trying to ask a question. I heard a little bit of a noise in the background. Okay, great. So moving on, um, I'm going to show feedback. So on my listings or listings that I've shown, so I've given feedback on listings that I've maybe shown or on my listings going through, for example, this one on my listings, it happens to be, has not yet been shown since the showing is Monday at 5.30. And you see the, the little different variations in the little bubbles over here on the left is based upon on what's going on. So Lisa gave me new feedback from the Saturday showing on Longdale. Um, she happened to be the, um, an agent that was still showing the property even though it was under contract and she gave some feedback. Um, Mike Tusi was, um, is going to be showing Granis this afternoon at three o'clock. Um, Michelle's gonna show um, Granis at three o'clock. Hey, it's 59.9, anybody who wants to show it, feel free. Um, uh, just be careful, don't fall through the holes in the floor. Okay, um, continuing on as I go through this, I wanna be able to show over here very quickly, I can see, so Joshua from Hunt Real Estate, now, no, just specific, but I'm just, you wanna point out, make sure you're following along. He showed, um, he, he showed Longdale on Friday and um, he declined um, as far as, from that standpoint, declined feedback. Over here, Lisa on Hicks Road, feedback included um, for homeowners and agent report. So these little buttons on the side, phone call, I could add feedback, email, and no feedback would be there, mark unresponsive. So for example, um, uh, let's see here, Longdale, Martin, um, was in the property. I didn't really show it, but let's just say I did, and I marked unresponsive. 
So now I've changed that and it prevents feedback from being sent, requests being sent out again, because Martin's been marked unresponsive for this feedback for this. That's all it means. Um, Longdale, it went to the agent, but not the homeowner when I sent the report. And I'll show you the reason why maybe I, I selected that option. So again, as a whole on my listings, I can go down and look. I could look specifically by 146 Longdale. And I over here, I could select the last 30 days, all feedback. I could select unable to retrieve all these different options here. I'm gonna do a search. And now it's only gonna give me Longdale feedback. So I have that as, as an option there. So that's under my feedback. I have taken the time to design my own feedback question. You have the ability to design your feedback form and have questions. It's real easy. And I, this, it's a, you could do yes, no, multiple choice, free form text question. Um, so I have this as my own feedback versus the default setting. And you can do that. So that's how my feedback will look. Obviously the photo of the property will be there. Example listing, location. Um, unsuitable, satisfactory, ideal. That's what I choose to use for wording on location, lot, condition, square footage, price competitive, I want to see it again, and, it's, and then free form for an agent to do. So again, you may want your feedback in a whole different way. You have the freedom to do it the way you would like. Maybe you only ask three questions. Maybe you ask one question, whatever. It doesn't make a difference you get to choose of how you might want that feedback form to be done. As an office, I could do office feedback or office form design and office setting. Now, we haven't been in the marketplace, obviously, in the last couple of years, that we've had to give a lot of feedback to homeowners other than how many offers they receive, but under reports, you will have several reports. Office activity, again, shows that I've requested listing activity, which we're gonna go in detail, then agent activity. Maybe I could say how many um, um, properties that I've gone in. I'm going to look at listing activity report. And I'm gonna search on my listing. I'm gonna search on um, 7th North Street. So there's the number of appointments by a graph. Up here's the total number of appointments. Um, total appointments in the last 30 days, six, same as, because we've only been on the market a short period of time. Number of appointments in the last seven days, one. So I have that basic information and then breaking it down by how many appointments. So if we've been on the market a while and the, and the showings are going down, 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 that is can be obviously a powerful tool for the homeowner to understand. Feedback at a glance. So that gives the feedback as agents have given it. Then there's feedback responses, more detail. So for example, this was shown on the 21st Friday, 1110 to 1140, Ryan showed it. Um, I, re I received feedback and this is how he filled it out. And in this case, foundation movement seems to still be active, concerns about future cost repairs to prevent further issues. Great feedback. I, you know, quite frankly, um, he had shown it before and he made that comment about foundation issues. Nobody else mentioned anything about foundation issues. I had that allowed me to pick up the phone to say, hey, Ryan, uh, uh, what do you mean about the foundation? And I was able to have a conversation and be able to ask more and see if I could answer more questions from that standpoint. So he preformed that and that was, it was helpful. It was good information. Down below, as far as listing activity report, I have my lockbox syncing to it. So it's gonna show the number of times the lockbox has been used and number of times it's been assigned, which should match up to the feedback. I have attachments to this listing, which I'll show you how to do. In this case, there's two attachments. One is, it says here, it's labeled as Town of Salina zoning map showing O2, which is the zoning code for that. And then just shows the zoning, um, the zoning district in the town code. So it gives details about it. Um, back to listing, 
homeowner version, which I'll go to in a second, change date range, display options, add an activity, because I could add something in here, send notification, email the report. Maybe I'm going to email it to the homeowner. Um, attachments, print the report, or download the PDF. So I'm right now on my report. I want to look at the homeowner's version. And the homeowner's version is basically the same thing. Gives feedback, gives feedback details, and gives showing activity details. The only thing that's now missing is the agent. So it doesn't see that it was Ryan and Ryan from that standpoint. So that is information that now the homeowner that I might freely email them. So now those options change. Display options, email the report. Maybe I'm going to email the report to my homeowner and I'm going to send it off to Susie at suzykey.com. And maybe I really want to download the PDF and keep it in my file or print that report. I can certainly do those items too. So when the market shifts and when there's more activity and we need to be addressing homeowners of what feedback is to help them understand what's going in the marketplace, this will be a really powerful tool to be able to do it in a neat format. Very nice, nice graphics, nice information. Um, questions on the report. All right, next. Yes, like any um, online product, there's always help and support. You can ask tons of questions over here. There is great resources, PDFs, showing time, examples, um, and showing time. So there's a lot of things in here if you want to self-serve. And you can also chat. And you can download the app, which is something I'm going to get into in a little bit here. So my information upgrade service. Showing time for the MLS is what you have. You have the basic integration and the ability for online. Yes, you can upgrade separately from the MLS and increase the level of service with showing time for a fee and have an 800 number and be able to um, have them make phone calls for you or to do additional things. Those are things that I'm not here to sell. You can figure it out on your own and you can talk to them directly if that is something that you as an agent or a company want to do. So again, great um, support here on the side. Now I'm going to switch my screen momentarily. If I can stop the screen share here and then I'm going to go back to a screen share and go over here. You should be seeing hopefully Showing Time mobile app. And now you should be seeing Showing Time for the MLS. So can somebody tell me, yes, you can see it? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I just wanna make sure you're alive out there. Showing Time for the MLS. So this is a flyer that has been given out when you join, it's been emailed out, it's available on the website, there's always things, and I'm sure that something could be emailed back out again after this is over. But this is just a real general flyer that talks about what showing time for the MLS is. Online showing, 24 access, automated feedback, you have access to the mobile, and you have that enhanced mobile center. And it just gives you, again, it's just a flyer, promoting it. The next thing that I want to click on is Showing Time Mobile App Quick Start Guide. So when I was in my setup information, I would have asked for the download for the Mobile Time app, and it would have allowed me to specifically say, my download means that it's Martin Carpenter and it matches up with this account. So, and that's where you would download the app from. But this is a step-by-step -step guide, and it certainly talks a little bit of what you can do from that mobile app. Almost everything that you can on the desktop. There's a few things that I think it's a lot easier on the desktop, but there's almost everything you can do on the mobile app is what you can do from the desktop. So that's the next quick start guide. And you can, um, again, just some basic information. 
showing time mobile app, what you can do, talks about a little bit more, um, goes into some um, a little bit more detail, my home app by showing time, which is really a consumer based um, um, approach. Next is within the MLS, there's a matrix virtual showing option via matrix and showing time. I'm going to try to go through some step by step, but this guide has been emailed out on the weekly Friday emails. Um, it's been emailed out, I know, a few times. The last version, I think, is 622. And um, you will see that it's just going to go through and say, how would you set up a um, showing option as far as virtual showing and selecting that option? Um, I wasn't going to get it necessary through a virtual showing option, but it is specifically there for our system of how to set it up. And again, kind of some step-by-step -step guides. Next, I think I've got one more here. Showing time through the MS Quick Start Guide, how to schedule a showing, which I'm going to go through in more detail and listing setup, which I'm gonna show, but it gives you some pretty pictures. So that's maybe helpful for something if you might want to um, select this as an option after, the, um, after my presentation, if you're looking for a little bit of a cheat sheet to refer to for the future. Any questions before I go to my um, property in a listing? Anybody have any questions? Okay. Martin? Yes. Go uh, ahead. Who's this, this it? Is probably, that Terry? It's probably off the topic, but I've always been curious about on, on the front part of the uh, app on your phone, there's a choice for update. Is yes. It, is That's it? the upgrade, I think, is what it says. I think it says upgrade, not update. No, uh, it says update. And if you tap it, the the circle keeps spinning. Is that supposed to do something? I okay. So Terry, I, I'm opening up the app um, and let me just uh, do this. I'm gonna stop screen share. So I'm not sharing my app, but what I've got here is the app. And I know this is gonna be hard to see. Uh, let's see. If you go back to the main screen if you were gonna open up a lockbox. Okay, just bear with me for one second. Let me do that. Let me. On the bottom, it'll say across the bottom row, it says alert, which is not highlighted. It says flashlight, and then it says update. And it's just a curiosity question. It's yeah, no, it's okay. Um, hang on here one second. Let me just go back. I'm going into the app, Terry, on my phone. So just, are you on an Apple or an Android, Terry? I'm on an I'm on an iPhone that I'm not in love with anymore. I think you're on the the Super Eki app, not the Showing Time app. That's what he, because I'm I'm looking at it and I see the the update, but that's actually the Eki app, not the Showing Time. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Welcome. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That would makes perfect sense. So um, across the bottom of Supra, not Showing Time, there's alert, flashlight, update. So update, Terry, specifically answer your question. That is updating your key to make sure that you are updated for today. For any reason that it didn't automatically do it, it may have a little red X through it or a little slash, and you just update. And, and ultimately, when that little circle goes away, um, you're updated. At the top, it says, you know, it's going to take a little time until it says keys updated, and that will kind of circle around and around a little bit. So... It seems like it never, my patience level is a little low, I'll admit it. Okay, it does take longer than one second, Terry. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all that way. It's like, why, why isn't this working? Come on. You know, we're, we're used to that instant um, feedback. I get it. All right. all right, thank you. Oh, you're good. You're good. All right, so I'm going to hopefully um, go over to... Uh, my app here, and you should be seeing. So I'm going to go into Matrix. Uh, I'm going to read later, read later. Okay. 
So now my incomplete listing, I'm happy to going on to my, my front page of matrix and I'm saying my incomplete listing. So I'm clicking on my incomplete listing. I'm going to edit this listing. So you should see my uh, modify listing select form at the top, single family, change the active status, open house, update remarks, update virtual tours, delete incomplete listing, uh, status listing, manage photos, supplement, manage showing time, and, ma and property panorama. I'm clicking on manage showing time. So now I'm back to that same kind of screen, but now specifically I'm under 3475 Porter Cottage, which is an incomplete listing. So I can update the showing instructions before I make it live in the system. So by default, it came up with appointment required. I could change that specifically for this listing to a courtesy call or go and show. I could say, I don't want feedback or I want um, showing time template. I could do that. I could say, I want to add a additional contact. So either a co-listing agent or add a new occupant. And I want to add um, existing, and I'm gonna add new. Should, Terry, should I ask, um, add my wife? Sure. You know, should she know when the house is being shown? And I'm going to say owner, yes, owner, occupant, yes. Phone type here, I'm going to say is a mobile phone and I'm going to say 315-555-1212. She doesn't even tell me what her own cell number is. I don't know why. And I'm going to say that it's abc at twcny.rr.com for an email address and I'm going to save that. Now, one thing, when I added that email address for Karen, that ABC at TWCNY, when this listing is live in the system, they will get an email that says, basically, do you want to download the Showing Time app? They get a version, if they so choose to, that's pared down just for their use for their property. So they have a calendar that they can see the showings. They have a way of seeing all the feedback that I've sent to them through showing time. So I have found that to be very helpful. When you do have spouses that maybe are not talking to each other or they're just living their own lives and they're not necessarily saying each day who were, there was a showing that was taking place and the G. Martin said this was the feedback. So they get to see it or heaven forbid, um, sellers that don't talk to each other intentionally, which we all de deal with, which thank goodness I like that because that means they have a house to sell. Um, so that's, that's what I say. So it's a way of a seller seeing it and they get that app. So I could add a, another owner occupant, maybe I could add my wife's boyfriend and they get to see the feedback on it because I'm choosing to give them all that information. So now I could do, because push is not, is not, is grayed out because they have not downloaded the app. So right now, um, Karen's gonna get information via text and email. I'm only getting things via email, but I will get it through push because once it's live in the system, by the way. I could go down here and start changing that I might say no same day appointments, um, lead time, I want an hour, that is required versus a suggested of one hour. Maximum length appointment. I'm gonna say I want it to be 45 minutes. I'm okay with allowing this property to be that to be overlapping. Well, in this case, we're in COVID, we don't do that. Man, add listing showing restriction. So I could do, um, uh, let me see here, uh, jog, um, um, home alone is my showing reason here. And I want a uh, time restrictions. And I'm going to say time restrictions, I'm going to say between 2.30 and uh, 4.45 um, that showing restrictions 
um, and it's either one time or it's going to be repeating and it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when those restrictions are going to take place. Or gee, um, I'm, there's no showings that will start until um, Friday. I could block out those times. Today's Monday, but the showings don't start to Friday. I don't want anyone to accidentally or attempt to schedule a showing during those time periods. So again, there's a lot of ways that you can do that to save yourself headache from having something scheduled and certainly being kind to your co-op agent by having things blocked off so they know when there's a, a limitation on showing and they can self-serve. Martin? Yes. I have a question. I tried to do that the other day, tried to block no showings in the morning until 11 o'clock and then block showings so there was no showings after 630. Okay. And I couldn't figure out, I mean, I got the morning done, but I couldn't figure out how to get the second um, set of no showings, so 630 until like 10 o'clock at night, not to show that too. How do you do it twice? Um, I, I know you can do it twice. I'm pretty sure, Evelyn, because I, I think I've had to do that myself. So let's just say AM, hey, um, um, uh, no showings. Let's see what happens here. And so I'm doing that and I'm saying that it's on, um, I'm gonna say that it's uh, here and until Labor Day and showing restrictions. Our last day with restriction. Okay, there were some errors showing restrictions. Please select at least one day in which a restriction should occur. Uh, okay, maybe I should have done restrictions over here. Again, I find sometimes is it as intuitive as I would like. So that would be specifically over here. So let's see, start date. I can check all boxes for every day and save showing restrictions. So I've got that. Now I wanna add a new showing restrictions and I'm gonna say PM no showings. And uh, let's see, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say same thing from today into Labor Day. And let's see what happens. So I just, I was able to do two different restrictions. Apparently, I didn't see that add new showing restrictions box. Okay. I, I hit the save, but I didn't see that you could do that. No problem. Oh, that's a good question. And again, you know, those are things that if we can do it, why not? So save yourself a phone call. Save that frustration from the agent not realizing they couldn't schedule something after they made plans. So access details. Okay, I've got uh, super lockbox and uh, alarm type in showing instructions here, something special, and driving directions if there's something special. So I've saved those changes for right there. So I've just created some restrictions and added somebody so they will get notification. Personally, I have found that if you give the seller the ability to say yes or no to a showing, they love it, they're more involved, and they're more apt to accept it. If I called up and Evelyn, you said you wanna show it tonight at six o'clock, and so I get the message, then I call up Karen, and Karen goes, well, can it be after 6.30? I really wanna eat dinner tonight. Then I've gotta go back, and then I've gotta go back and forth. But when they have the ability to do it right then and there, um, they're more apt to say yes and not have any issues. Personally, it's a lot easier. We are getting a little bit of feedback from somebody, so I think somebody's leaving a voicemail. Okay, so so that is. Yeah, my name's Terry Quigg. I'm with Hunt Real Estate. I'd like to show. Uh, Susan, can you mute him? 839 Thunder Road tomorrow afternoon. Uh, that's Tuesday afternoon. Probably Susan, whoever is there? Three or four o'clock in the afternoon. My number is 427. 
Uh, Terry, I'm going to mute you again. Okay. Um, all right. So in there, so that's the feedback. So then the other thing that is, I find extremely helpful in this day and age, especially with COVID now, add, you can add whatever you want for attachments. So it's the same attachments that you might in the MLS. You could add attachments here. So after somebody schedules an appointment, if you add an attachment, they get a separate email that says, here's additional information for you for the property showing. I can't tell you how many times that if you have it as an email right then and there when you're showing the property, because maybe I didn't download it in today's world of COVID, we're not supposed to have extra pieces of paper laying around in the house. Maybe I sent it to the buyer ahead of time, maybe I did not, but if I have it in my phone and they ask a question, I can open it up and look right then and there and I can also forward that email onto my buyer that says basically here's the attachments. It's an easy, easy way to make somebody's life a lot easier in that co-op agent by doing it. Really easy. Questions on the setup, restrictions, attachments. All right. Anybody? So that's how you can do the setup. Again, you know, it doesn't take that long. I know I'm dragging it out here by talking about it. It's a click, 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 and you can take care of those um, searches from that standpoint. Let's see here. Uh, cross property. I don't know what this one was. Okay. Oh, I know. Here was here was new listing. All right. So um, I want to schedule an appointment. So I'm going to pick on, um, let's see here, uh, Rachel Court. I'm going to schedule one thing. I'm in here on this. The showing time is showing up there. I could click on it there. And I would say I want to schedule a single showing or add to showing card. In this case, I'm going to schedule a single showing. It's blocked out here. There's no other restrictions. This is blocked out because, oh, it is um, two o'clock and probably there's an advanced one hour notice deep by default. So I could schedule anything in here. And as soon as I clicked on a time, it came up. There's information, Sunday. It's a showing, not a third showing. Um, estimated time 2.30 to 3.30 because my default was an hour and I'm going to go say no I'm going to do a three o'clock my agents of type I'm a buyer's agent because hey we have to disclose to our fellow agent what our agency relationship is what a great way of doing it and then I could select a buyer's name or I could add a buyer's name and I'm going to say it's going to be um test you know help if I don't type test buyer and I have the way of creating. So I'm showing this. Now, the listing agent doesn't see test buyer, but it's a way for me to be able to keep track of what properties I could clearly do a search on, what test buyer I showed for ease of knowing and ease of COVID tracing, if heaven forbid that I um, was in a property and now I have to figure out how many um, interactions I had with test buyer on a property. Join me for a live video showing that would be an option if I was sending this off to the buyer. Um, but in that case, that's a, by default that's there. Option note to listing, um, listing representative, um, will you send a floor plan of the model? Because that is a brand new house, townhouse I noticed, and I could click request appointment and it would go off to the agent either for an automatic confirmation or obviously something that they need to confirm either with the homeowner, the builder, the agent, or whoever else. So I think most people are really familiar with that, not that big of a deal. But what I find is a lot of people do not realize 
the ability to um, do the showing card. So I am going to try to set up several. So I've got several properties marked, different parts of the town, and I'm gonna go showing time. Automatically, it says you've got several things selected here, Martin, add it to a showing card. So I'm starting off, when am I gonna show this? Think of a showing cart like Amazon. I go in today, I search something, I save it to my cart. Oh, you know, I'm gonna buy something else and I wanna package everything together. Um, and the, so that's how you kinda of have to think about it. I'm showing this buyer on Saturday. On Monday, they send me five properties or four properties that they wanna see. On Tuesday, they tell me, oh, take off that one, we drove by it, never mind. On Wednesday, they add a property. On Thursday, they take, they add the property they asked them to take off on Tuesday. Does that sound like today's world of buyers back and forth, back and forth? Yeah, and Friday you kill them. And Friday you kill them. So, um, thank you, David, that's exactly right. So, you know, for me, keeping track of that, and figuring out who's on first and what's on second is crazy. So if I do a showing cart, it makes it a lot easier and I don't have to think about it or recap um, myself. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna show this on Saturday. I'm selecting my buyer, test buyer, and I'm gonna say, okay. Now, in this case, there's four properties. So for Saturday's date, the test buyer, I could have some notes. So Mary Ray, you see that by default, it just loaded it up in the order that I had them in here. So it's taking to one, three, four. Is that the smartest route? I don't know, maybe, let's see. It came back and said, yep, that's the smartest route. Well, I'm meeting them in my office um, in Clay, so, I am going to um, renumber this. And I'm going to say, I want this to be number one and this to be number two. So I update it. So now I just updated. Now, in this case, this was new construction, Rachel Court. And the uh, listing agent for that property did not map it correctly because they put me at the center of the zip code of Balzo, which is out here in um, near Beaver Lake Nature Center, just off 690. Um, so that is not the location. So this is, you know, not intentional, but this is an example of somebody didn't have it correct. Um, so actually it should be Balzo, New York, not, um, not Clay. So they, they, that I'm not sure exactly how to adjust, but we'll figure it out. So, so one, two, three, four, and you go, wait a minute, I want to, this is really, I want to be number three, and this one I want number four. And now I update it again. And so I'm gonna start there, I'm gonna to go to number two, I'm gonna number three, and I'm coming back this way. So it has the ability to, to recalculate everything that's going on. Now you will notice here that it, talks about the time of miles and the time between each property. So from here to number two, it's 15 miles and should take me 19 minutes. Now, that doesn't mean how long I'm gonna be in this property, doesn't mean how long I'm gonna be in this property, but it now gives me the ability to figure out maybe my timing as I go back and forth. So now let's just say um, turn by turn direction and I'm gonna go back. I could do that smart route. Um, I could make stops in here. I could add a stop. So I'm gonna go and, uh, um, and go downtown and I'm going to, we're gonna stop at, at Dunkin' Donuts downtown. And that's, we're having a break right there. I could add that as a stop. So add a listing stop. Maybe there's something that's not in showing time and or I could, I could just add another stop. So now, 
I'm going to say on Rachel Court, I'm meeting them at 11 a.m. So 11 to 12.15, I'm going to save that. And I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to save. So there's a, oh, agency type. I didn't do my agency type. Buyer's agent. I'm going to say, now this one, I'm going to say I'm going to do 12 o'clock. Still a buyer's agent. This one is one o'clock. And you know, you get the idea here as we go through. And that's my listing, so I'm a, it's a company listing, so it's my dual. And I'm gonna pick a time there. That's also a way of doing it. I could pick a time there and hand type it, but I like using the map function. I'm gonna do that. So I now have that ability to do that. Now, I have not scheduled these appointments yet. I could send a request. So I have this set up on Monday. I add a new one on Friday. And uh, uh, I'm going to just add for the lack of better um, fixed road 13027. I'm going to find that property. OK, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, listings, we get listing addresses. Oh, I need it. I need an MLS number. So hang on here. Uh, just find another one here. Just add that number. It's the okay. I just added this one. So in this case, it's saying I'm going to go here and go back there. I'm going to change the order. I'm going to say um, that's number five and this is number four because I can figure that out myself. Now I'm going back and forth this way. So I need a time over here yet. And I'm going to adjust this one. I'm going to adjust this one for two. And agency type again. It gets me every time here, guys. And I'm going to adjust that for that time. So bing, 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 bing. So again, there's nothing scheduled until I send the request. So this is on Monday. I go through. They add something. That's how they do it. I take something away. I adjust, I adjust. So Friday, 24 hours before I need to schedule things, um, I'm going to send a request. If something went under contract between now and then, it will, it will bounce back. And it will tell me that there was a updated on a listing from that standpoint when I try to schedule. I might uh, say email, and I could email this upcoming link from that standpoint. I could also print, and it's going to come up with a page, agents' versions, buyers' version, version, and and it gives me the ability. I could have directions. I could show a map. And so now I have directions turn by turn. It shows me a map of where we are. So again, maybe you're handing this off or you're emailing it to the buyer because they're going to be meeting you, of course, at every property because you're not going to have them in your car. That's another ability. So Mary Ray, how, how does that answer your questions on, on adjusting things. Did it answer some of it or no? And you're welcome to unmute yourself. Mary Ray? Did you ask a question and hang up? <laughs> Martin, I have a question if Mary Ray's not. Go ahead, Evelyn. Okay. Yes, I'm not sure if she um, stepped away, so. No, I'm here. I okay. understand. I okay. unmuted, but go ahead, Evelyn. Okay. So my question, Martin, is you mentioned that you were going to send this out 24 hours before Saturday. Right. Well, because I'm doing it Saturday. So, you know, I'm just making some assumptions here, Evelyn. Um, so today's Monday. You know, I could send it out today, but when I was setting up the example that the buyer says on Monday, here's the five properties they want to see. And on Tuesday, they add something. On Wednesday, they take something away. 
on Thursday, two of them sell and there's a new listing that I say I want to add. So it's fluid. That's what I'm saying. It's just that shopping cart. I put it in the shopping cart and the price went up. Well, I'm not going to buy it. No, I found it at Target Local. I'm not going to order it on Amazon on Friday. I mean, so it's fluid until I hit send request. Now, I mind that schedule. I, I use 24 as an example. If there's a time restrictions, and I would have looked at some of these things, you know, maybe there's a 24 hour time restrictions on a couple of these properties. But usually we, you know, as a courtesy for when we can, we're usually scheduling things 24 hours in advance, as an example. That's how I view it. I mean, you, you might be saying, well, I want to do it two days in advance. Great, no problem. Okay, I just didn't know if it had to be 24 hours for nope. using shopping cart because I could see that appointments would get booked and it would be more complicated if you did it 24 hours in advance. Correct, that's correct. So I could do this anytime. I was just using that as an example, so. Thank you. Good question. Mary Ray, did you uh, keep unmuted here? Yeah, I'm, I'm unmuted now, Martin. Um, this, I, I've never used it quite like this, and um, I think this is pretty cool. I like it. Um, the one thing that, that I was having trouble with, you explained in the very beginning, I just, um, I, I don't know why, but it wasn't totally intuitive to me when setting up a complicated showing schedule with a lot of restrictions for one of my listings. Okay. In trouble, you know, getting the, the blocks just right and, and it looks so simple the way you did it. So I'll be, I'll be fine now. Okay, no problem. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, one thing when we're talking about that showing restrictions that I talked about, you know, maybe two parties don't always talk, you know, because in reality, um, using a husband and wife, using that as a hypothetical example, um, you know, I, you know, I would say, who wants to get the showing and um, showing approval? And let's just say they both say they want to do it because they're scheduled. So um, one spouse approves it. The other one's going to see that. So they're going to know, hey, I need to um, drive around the block before I get home because there's a showing going on at five o'clock today. So it does serve a purpose. The other scenario that I found extremely helpful when you have those dreaded tenants and um, I always get the homeowner actively involved, the landlord, or another way of phrasing it, because how many times have you um, had a tenant that says, Martin never told me there was a showing. So I make sure they see every single showing that gets requested, accepted, or denied, because now they've got a active interest in knowing what's taking place. So that's how I view it a lot of times. You know, they, they, it's a nice tool. Or let's just say it's an ugly divorce and both parties are on it and maybe the spouse in the house is refusing showings. And, you're, and, and you, you work for both of them and in the beginning, okay, I'm going to set it up that you're going to see how many re showing requests and how many get confirmed and the feedback because you're both on it. It takes that he said, she said, I didn't know anything out of the picture. Even when you've got two parties that are owners of the property, that in itself can be a nice feature also. So, and also it's a good recap of how many showings have taken place. Before moving on with showing cart, any other questions on this? All right, so I'm gonna return back And those were the properties from that standpoint that I had scheduled in showing time. And um, just going back there again for those new listings, sorry. Uh, I'll pick on Eli again, I think, was it Morgan? Yeah. How, about, how about Gemini? Um, so Joanne. So again, of course, you know, it's down here. It's like anything else, it's up here. It has the ability to do it in multiple places to be able to schedule that, which again, most people know, but every once in a while, we're all used to looking at screens differently. And I want to make sure that everyone knows that. So um, let's, let's just see, all offers due Monday by 8.24 at 8 p.m. Now, 
um, I'm going to schedule a single showing. An agent has it scheduled out on Thursday, the 27th. So, you know, it's interesting. I've seen agents block showings after, um, after that deadline for in the world that we're living in right now with multiple offers and a negotiating deadline. Doesn't mean that they're going to get that they're accepting an offer. So, would that be something that, gee, hey, um, Susie, you've got something scheduled on the 27th, and I see that today, and I'm going back and remembering what's going on. Hey, Susie, there's offer deadline today. Are you sure you don't want to show it on Monday? You know, that's again, I would do that just because I want to make sure that everyone has a shot at the best um, offer for the buyer, for the seller, and they have every buyer an opportunity to get into it. So again, you can use that to your benefit. I want to show you the calendar sync, and there may be some feedback here. So I am apologize. Um, I tried this before we started here today, and there was some feedback. So just bear with me for a second. Let's see here. All right. So you, I believe, right now, I'm. I've got a different device that my iPad, for lack of, um, lack of, uh, <laughs> sorry here, lack of uh, trying to show you how it might be. And I've got to stop sharing here. I'm going to see if I can share my screen here. Oops. I'm going to share my screen here. Pardon me here as I figure this out. I'm going to have to make, make myself a co-host here to be able to share the screen, I believe. And co-host. I don't think uh, it's going to work as good as I thought it was going to, so. Well, that didn't go well, but let, let, me, let me do this in a different way then, so bear with me for a second. I'm going to uh, take another approach here. When we finish up this, we're going to get into the uh, market stats. So if you have some additional questions on that, on, on what we're covering, please make sure we ask where I'm on it before I switch gears. I'm uh, loading my calendar on my desktop instead of doing on the through the app because I thought that was going to be easier. But it's just taking a little bit um, 
to load my calendar. Zoom does take a lot of um, computer processing power is what I've always noticed. I'm, it's still loading, so I can uh, do a little song and dance while we're waiting, but you don't want to see that. Well, it's loading. Um, in all seriousness, do you, pardon me, do you have any questions at this point? Okay, and nothing's in the chat, right, Susan? This is Christine. I don't see anything oh. in the chat, Martin. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Martin? Yes. Jerry. What do you find to be the most valuable functions of this? Um, the most valuable functions um, is that you can schedule things easily. I don't have to play phone tag with an agent and um, it's uniform. And uh, honestly, the other thing that I find is that, um, you know, when you're in the car and you're on the fly or in front of the house and somebody says they want to schedule something, you can go, when you're using your app, I don't have to go into the MLS. All I have to do is go into the app and, and I can search and find the property in the app to schedule it. I tell you, that's the easiest thing in the world. Um, now, it all depends on how the listing agent sets it up. So if they make it easy, then it's super easy. If they don't, the only time that I've ever found that when it hasn't been um, easy to use is when an agent doesn't take the time to set it up to begin with, and maybe they've turned off showing time, and then you've got to call them. And, and you know, and Terry, I'm just going to say, you know, sometimes I've come across an agent that says, oh, I, um, I don't like showing time. I said, oh, what, what don't you like about it? I just don't like it, you know, because they probably just haven't taken the time to look and to figure it out or to set it up. So that's probably always been the biggest thing um, as far as an annoyance. But the best thing is the fact that you can do it and you can do it on the fly. So Terry, I'm in my, let's just say you call me and I'm out in my car about ready to start an appointment. And you say, Martin, I wanna show 146 Longdale. Um, can I show it? I can go in the app and I can see that there's nobody showing it right now. And I can say, yes, Terry, you should be able to go into, go ahead and go into it. I'm gonna add your showing into the system right now. I can go in and add you within a couple of clicks to show it. You're gonna get the confirmation. I'm gonna have the record that was showing. You're gonna get the feedback request. So it makes it really, really easy. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go back to my Zoom screen because my calendar did finally load. So just bear with me, I'm gonna share my screen. So this is my desktop calendar. And all I, the whole point is what I wanna show you is off here on the side, in my calendar, I have different calendars for different reasons. So in this case, my calendar is blue. I have an office staff calendar, professional development, um, top producer, showing time, a conference room at the office building in DeWitt that I have that I can see what's going on if I need to use it. So I have all these different internet calendars is the best way. And showing time is orange. So for right now, what you can see here is for my day is I have my blue and here's, you know, teach T3 and everything else, but in orange and it's on my calendar on my phone, the same way I can see that there's an inspection going on on Longdale that started at nine to 12 p.m. And that there was a requested appointment for 3 p.m. for Granite. And there was another one at five and there was another one at 5.30, and there was a canceled appointment on Longdale. It still kept it in there, which was nice. So I know what's going on without having to remember every single appointment. Now, right now, yeah, 
you know, I think probably for a lot of us, we don't have tons of listings right now. But, you know, not too long ago, we had five, 10, 15, 20 showings. Can you imagine, I mean, listings, can you imagine trying to keep track of all the listings that are going on? So quite frankly, when that homeowner calls and says, hey, Martin, I know we have a showing this afternoon. Um, do you know if they need anything? I can look at my calendar really quickly and go, oh yeah, I talked with Terry about it. Um, I know um, he, his people have a lot of interest um, in the in-law apartment that we have, and maybe that's gonna be a good fit. I have that information in front of me. That's what's great about that shared calendar is that it's now syncing and it's live on my phone what is in the showing time. Because the showing time has a calendar in the system, it's now sharing it with me. I love that because it really helps keep you on track. It really does, it really does. And I will say briefly here, um, this is, I've got a, I've got a tab open that I'm going to switch over to in just a second here. Again, there's always so much, you know, that of things that you can do, of course, you just have to figure out what's the right thing for you. Um, I believe this is where I'm going to see this. You're now seeing in showing time for MLS, one of those search bars, remember I showed you where all the help was, mobile, calendar sync. And it, you know, it's, I don't know, I think it was two minute long video here of how to do a calendar sync. It's really easy. It goes through the steps specifically of how to do a calendar sync. So um, I'm always happy to help anybody, honestly, you know, off, you know, on the side, be able to help you to do something, but it's really easy to get it on your calendar. And, and you know, there's a lot of times there may be you have kids or you have that spouse and you maybe there's a sports calendar or there's a after school calendar or there's a family calendar. Having all those shared calendars just from um, ease in life, it's really nice to have that ability to have that shared calendar. So, all right. Are we ready to move on to showing time stats, market stats? Hopefully you are, because that's what I'm going to go try to get ready next here. All right. Um, I'm going to zoom over to share another screen again. So you should now be back to my dashboard. And I know I've talked about this before on some of the different buttons, um, but over here on this right, this little widget is a live widget. And it comes from market stats by showing time. So it's live on your dashboard. It's showing closed sales by this chart. And it's live because it will change. And it's also, you can see what each number stands for. You can also click on this widget and see the number um, of median sales price. And we all know the median sales price has been going up, up, up because there's nothing for sale and that's been pushing it. Supply, boy, <laughs> talk about falling off a cliff from that standpoint. Um, the, you know, where the supply were ticking up just a little bit, but still not much. Days on market, like a rock down days on market. What are we up to here? Nine, <laughs> from that standpoint. Hey, a healthy market, historically is 60 to 90 days and we're nine days. I don't know, for March of 2019, we we're at 39 days. That's amazing. Not, not always in a good way because it certainly does make it a challenging market. Okay, so market stats. I am going in. There are two main component, components of market stats by showing time. Market stats, just for your knowledge, was a separate company and showing time purchased it a couple of years ago and integrated into their system because they already kind of had the data. It was a, um, a unique fit. There's InfoSparks 
and fast stats. Those are the two things that we're really gonna talk about heavily. I'm gonna click on fast stats first. And fast stats is exactly that. So it's alive in the system. We have the map of Central New York and notice it's color coded. So orange is here. Blue is all of this area plus those areas in blue and then weekly activity report. So in orange, we have areas that you can pull down. And as it says, if you want a school district, you go to the S's to find all the school districts. We also have a time period. The most recent, going back to a different time period, it goes back at this point to January 2017. I can also click on a map and I can start um, drilling down that way. So I'm gonna pick on Madison County here for a second. So I'm clicking on that. So right now, I'm looking at the Madison County as a whole. Maybe, pardon me, I wanna to go to Casnovia. Now I'm going to look at um, Casnovia. Okay, hang on a second. And that probably opened up a PDF, <laughs> which now I've got to switch my screen to get show the PDF. And uh, let's see here. The PDF that opened up is now showing, and again, this is live, it's real data, and it did, even though there was a delay that I had to get over to the PDF, it gave that information. So, just as it says, under Fast Stats, Local Market Update, July 2020. And it's gonna show the key metrics. This July versus last July, percentage of change, year to date, under single family, under condo and townhouse, a little graphic on median price, a little graphic on medium sales price, and it's just a one page report. It's meant to be fast, it's meant to be simple, it's meant to be very direct, so you know what's going on, or you can also help your seller understand. Right now, we are obviously in that deficit as far as the number of new listings and closed sales. Not just new listings, closed sales are down. Will that help them understand and help you tell the story that you're trying to tell them of what's going on in the market area for Casnovia. Now that's the township of Casnovia. Now, if I went back over here and I typed S and I start getting down to school districts and I went to school district and I want the most recent report, it is, now you didn't see what I was doing because I just went over and I'll show you. It opened up a new report, school district. Obviously school district is going to not just be the township borders. It's going to be Sullivan, Fenner, Nelson, Derider. You know, it's going to, it's going to include other areas. So now that maybe you want to have a conversation with them about what's happening within the school district. Same thing, one page report, single family, condo, all the numbers, and a couple quick graphics at the bottom. Easy, straightforward, not that big of a deal. I'm gonna share my screen back over to um, where I was. So all I had done is I had clicked up here, school district, selected Casnovia and clicked on that report and that's what loaded up that last report. Now I wanna go back. Maybe I want the whole county and I'm gonna say Onondaga County report. See how it just opened up that whole report for Onondaga County. I gotta go back and share my screen, switch back and forth. Uh, just a second. Right here, get back to that PDF. 
and you now you should be now seeing the local market report July 2020 Onondaga County showing the same things what's going on in the marketplace number of new listings um, year to date so it tells a story as far as the number of listings in July they were still down but we're in a deficit for the year and we were down in July closed sales but hey Mr. And Mrs. Seller did you know that closed sale in July is probably a transaction that was from March or April and that is why that numbers may be down so much more there versus they are year to date so that may be a way of help telling the story same thing graph a couple quick graphs on the median and the sales price in both single family and condo switching the screen back again going back over to um, this screen so that's under local market reports monthly indicators so this is the whole Syracuse footprint Cuga um, Syracuse Utica Oswego but not um, Jefferson Lewis and not Portland so recent reports July 2020 same thing opening up a report I'm switching back over to the screen I'm going to share this report that July 2020 report is 12 pages market snapshot a little summary in verbiage don't get confused active listings is not three that's the page number i know that gets catch people from time to time but again this is what you might see that is sometimes mailed out new listings closed average much more detail in what's going on so you have that engineer that wants to know a little bit more you're trying to assess what's going on it's quick it's easy it's fast stats report go back over here go back to screen share for this one M weekly market activity report now we're talking about that whole footprint so jeff lewis cuga over here and Cortland now and we're going to see that report which i'm going to open up and i'm gonna stop sharing screen over here go back over here to this one and now you see that report it's only eight pages it's a slightly different version of the weekly market activity report gives those quick highlights talks about what pages these will be on and again a slightly different report for different reasons that you may need to tell that story or help people understand. Going back over here to the fast stats. Before I click on InfoSparks, what questions might you have for fast stats? Anybody? Martin, does the weekly report, if you're asking for a weekly report in August, does it go from Sunday to Sunday or from like today's Monday? So whatever day you're on from okay. Monday to Monday. Um, the weekly report, it, it, it is a weekly, it ends today. So it's up to, I believe midnight last night. So it says as of August 24th, that's what it's referring to. So, um, so that's a current, so going back weekending, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Evelyn, sorry. It's and week ending 824, but it's using the data up through the 24th is what I was getting at. Probably at midnight. I don't know if this is live exactly the same way as the fast stats are. I would expect that it would have been as of midnight last night. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So these are the reports that are readily available, these weekly reports using here, you will see under, 
Um, I mean, again, you can pull it up yourself, but let me just go in to the website, our association website, and it's going to be a slow load because of Zoom going on behind the scenes on my computer with a screen share. And uh, let's see. I think under press room is where it's stored. No. Or is it under members? Um, these reports are stored also on the website. And um, I'm because it's going to be slow loading here, I, I, I'm going to move on. But they are stored here. So let me close that for the sake of time and resource. So before I go, last, last question on fast stats. My areas, I could define a market area, frequently used areas, and the reason why would I go to the info sparks, that's what I want to show you. I could define that and certainly have my profile if there was a, my photo, I wanted additional information that I could change to display on a report. User manuals and frequently asked questions, of course, is right there. Same thing, lots of information, some quick videos. But again, I'm going to go to InfoSparks next. So live, live, live data from that standpoint. By default here, I've got Central New York Information Services as my default. And I can now do some limited customizing in my report. So I'm going to say right now, I want 100 to 200,000 single family, over 2,000 square feet, at um, three bedrooms, and at least two baths previously owned. And you saw the graphic changing as I was, pardon me, as I was going along because it is that quick. Now, what's displaying here is median sales price for Central New York Information Service. I could change it to the average price. I could, what are the number of new listings? Same search criteria across the top, homes for sale, pending sales, closed sales, days on market, month's supply, percentage of list price, percentage um, of per, price per square foot median, price per square foot average, dollar value. Ooh. So that's the information that I'm working on right now. Now, I'm doing this as a line. I can do it as a bar graph. If that, was, it was, that helps tell the story differently. I have, I'm going to go back and do it as a line. I have three years. I could go back five years if that helped with the story of what's taking place. I could do 12 months. I could do a rolling three months, rolling six months, rolling 12 months. Again, each one is going to tell a story differently depending on what you're looking for. Now, that was Central New York with these basic things selected. Now, I want to go with a few other things. I can do that's all. I could do township, county, zip code, area, school district. Um, so those would be the, um, the six options that I could use. So obviously, it all would be easy within the Central York Information Services. Township, just as it says, county by each county, 
zip code by each mailing address zip code area because that could be now a village um, which may not be um, encompassed all the town. So you get to that situation and then school district. I'm going to pick on school district. I'm going to pick on, pick on Volunzo because it's right there at the top of the list. Now, maybe I'm going to say all price ranges and I'm going to say um, single family and I'm going to say all sizes and I'm going to say all bedrooms and I'm going to say all bathrooms and I want new construction. <coughs> so, pardon me. So now that is now showing and telling the story what's going on with new construction, dollar volume, because that's where I left off. So what's the sales price? And I'm looking at median. So that's what's going on with the median sales price within the Bonzel School District, new construction, single family. That's all I have selected. Now, maybe I say I want less than 15 square feet. Well, probably there's not very many when it comes to that. So that's going to throw everything off. Um, I'm going to go back to all sizes. So there's a few things that I could customize. There's some limitations in what I could customize. So price range. When I could do that customizing, I could get an example over here. You saw it gives me a chart on each price range to give maybe a better sense of what's going on. And maybe I'm going to say, I don't care about 99. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. So that's one way. Um, um, property types. I'm going to, um, you know, I can customize slightly by doing that by adding those. Square footage, same scenario. I'm gonna throw those charts in with different colors. You know, you may or may not find that's helpful. It all depends. Um, now that was under Bonsal School District. Now I'm going to um, get rid of I want to get rid of that. I want to do all ranges, all sizes, all bedrooms, and get rid of that. Okay, so now I am just doing single family. So Bonsal, and I say, hey, I want to compare it to um, um, Fayetteville. Manlius. So Bonsal School District versus Fayetteville Manlius. What's going on within those two. So we now have a, a, obviously the blue and the orange chart that they show up on your side. And what's the average price? We saw what the median was. Number of new listings. Homes for sale. Pending sales. Again, you know, whatever you might need to use it for. I was just speaking to dramatic areas that would be different in the county. Maybe it's Balms, maybe it's Fable and James O'Dwyer. If you have that person that's asking what's going on in each school district, price per square foot. Interesting, price per square foot is um, the, what the difference is, how close they are in many ways. And then dollar value. Now, again, we have those filters up there that we can change. And we could print it. We could print it, oh, hang on here. I gotta do a little. Uh, my printing options here are static or live. Can you see this? I wanna make sure this is what you can see. Can you see the share option button or tab across the top? Is that showing or no? Anybody? Yes, it's showing. Okay, thank you. So share options, step one, what data would you like to share? Static or live? Obviously at this moment or a live version. Do I want it as a PDF, which is great for printing, social media or email, embed it into a blog website or CSV, grab that raw data and put it in Excel spreadsheet for anyone who loves Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then you could 
download it that way or start over. So, so the reason why I say that is that share button, it's that exact same thing. I'm going to share and it's going to give you that little graphic. And that's the graphic of the URL that's going to be live with this data on my website. So my blog that I talked about Bonzo and Fable Manliness and how competitive they are or whatever the case would be. So we talked about on the website, this little widget on the dashboard, that widget is what was shared. Hang on, gotta get back. Okay, that widget on the dashboard is what is shared. So that's an example of sharing something that's live. So um, the market stats by showing time, fast stats and info sparks are really simple in, in the use of them and creating them. It all depends on what, what stories I say you're, you need to tell to help either describe something, help people understand the marketplace, or you understand what's going on in the marketplace. Gee, I haven't sold a house in Bonzola in a few years. What's really going on? Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much, um, um, what the average price was. I didn't realize how much has been new construction. I didn't realize, you know, whatever the case may be, that might be something that you would be looking at. So again, you can break it down in many different ways to be able to do it. Pardon me, I should have put those on, do not disturb. Questions on InfoSparks. So does anybody have a burning question on market stats or showing time that you have thought of that we haven't covered? We have time for up to 13 more minutes of questions to stay on target for being done by three, no later than three. Hi, Deborah. I just had a quick question. I already have myself a calendar set up and it's like personal stuff on my calendar. And I just wanted to ask you about um, not showing my personal calendar in um, while we're s setting up. Okay. So, so Deborah, um, um, when you talk about the calendar, so are you, are you talking about on your phone? So let's start off with that. Is it on your phone? Yes. Okay. Let's just say we're setting up a showing time appointment and I like the calendar features mm -hmm. and then you're starting to share calendars and okay. I didn't want any well, personal. Well, well, I'm, I'm, you know, so I know you got I, the color codes. I, yes, but exactly. the color I, code would be one. So you, if you share your calendar from your phone, so when you're sharing the calendar from showing time, you're sharing you're sharing that ability to your phone. Now, if you share your calendar on your phone with somebody, you can share individual calendars. So I don't have I, it set up. That's what I was asking. How do I set that up? Um, more than what I'm going to be able to do on Zoom, but Deborah, okay. I'm happy to help you and help you figure it out. So just the real estate calendar is what I would like. Oh, uh, understand. Uh, you know, okay. I, I don't need to see all your. Uh, all the all the personal doctors things. appointments and stuff like that exactly. right. that's exactly right so <laughs> okay thank you uh, yeah but but in reality you're sharing your showing time calendar that system to your personal calendar so showing time isn't getting all those things back there it's a one-way sync is lack of better word you're getting everything that's on showing time into your calendar on your phone Okay, I didn't, I, I didn't realize that, but if it's one way coming to me, that's fine. Yep, no problem.